Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape, and in this video, we're checking out the Eastman Sport, an electric bike that strikes a very interesting balance between specs and price. So let's check it out. Before we get into the review, if you are looking to purchase an Eastman electric bike, please consider using the link in the description before completing your purchase as it helps me continue to make videos like this one. I will also put links to our electric bike discounts code page, our electric bike accessories list, as well as our top e-bike brands page. Purchases made through links on those pages also help support me, so thanks in advance. With that, let's get to the walk around. All right, let's get into the walk around of the Eastman Sport. So first off, the first thing you might notice here is the color. So this is the cobalt blue variation. The other color they sell it in is just black. So opted to go with the blue. And I will say it's a really sharp looking color. It's a cross between a blue and purple. So just keep that in mind. I've showed this bike to a lot of people and they do really like this paint color. So this is the cobalt blue. All right, let's start up here in the front. Maybe let's start with these tires. So just a perfect example of the parts shortage going on in the bike industry overall. So you can see we have WTB, and if you aren't familiar, they are a big name in bike tires. And I went on the Eastman website and they said that these are supposed to be CST tires. So on a lot of bikes these days, they're having to swap components. Most of the time, companies won't downgrade a component. They'll go with something either at the same level or a step up, and clearly, I would say that these are a step up. WTB is a big brand, so these are the Wolverine SS 2.0 tires, 27 and a half by two inch tires. They got a little bit of tread on them, so definitely gonna be okay on some trails with perhaps some loose gravel. So I was really pleasantly surprised getting these tires. Now that's not to say if you order this bike, you might not receive it. I suppose you could email Eastman and ask them if you're curious, but uh, just something to note that's happening in the bike industry. And there's perhaps other components around the bike that they have done this as well, just to make sure that they can get bikes out the door. All right, moving on to the brakes. So these are hydraulic disc brakes, two pistons, and this is definitely one of the highlights of this electric bike because of the affordability, and it also has hydraulic disc brakes. Usually you'll see Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes or other mechanical disc brakes. So one of the reasons that I wanted to get my hands on an e-spin electric bike was really to see what you get for the price knowing that they include hydraulic disc brakes. That's one thing that a lot of people try to upgrade or wish they did have when they purchase an electric bike around this price range is they wish it would have hydraulic disc brakes. So that's something uh, that's really nice on this bike. 180 millimeter discs. And one of the other things that is unique to this bike too compared to other brands is it comes fully outfitted. You can see we have some plastic fenders here and they go mounted right here at the bottom of that front fork. And speaking of the fork, so we have a front suspension fork. I will take a short little video of me pushing on it, but generally speaking, when you're purchasing an electric bike around this price range, you can't expect too much when it comes to suspension, but it is nice that this one comes with one. And with the suspension fork, I couldn't find a brand on it. And it does have a lockout up here on the front, as well as a preload adjustment on the other side. And you'll note here the four front bolts, so that's for an optional front rack if you wanna add additional cargo capacity to your electric bike, so that's a nice option. 
and mounted to the front fork. You also have this integrated front light. That's a nice addition, not necessarily going to come on electric bikes in this price range, though many will have at least an integrated front light and then in the rear, they may or may not have an integrated light. One thing I wanted to talk about with the eSpin Sport is the cable management and where the cables run on the bike. And you can see here they have Velcro straps to kind of bring all the cables together into one bunch. It looks okay, it's not the most clean I've seen, but a lot of people, if they really want a clean look, they'll buy some additional cable management and perhaps wrap all of these cables into one bunch. But one of the things that I wanted to call out here is where the cables route to underneath the down tube here. So you can see we have some cables that are externally mounted and then you have some that actually go internal into the frame right here. And on most of the other electric bikes that I have reviewed, the cables are all internal. So just something to keep in mind with this e-spin bike. For maintenance perspective, it's actually a little bit easier if you need to perhaps remove these cables. Sometimes internally routed cables can be fr quite frustrating if you need to work on them, but something to keep in mind nonetheless. And while I'm here, I'll point out the bottle cage bosses at the bottom of the down tube. So you don't have any other options for a bottle cage. So you're not gonna be able to grab this while you're on the go. Although if it were me, I would probably mount a folding lock down here and then perhaps use some other kind of straps to put a bottle cage perhaps up here on the top tube. Some of the straps that allow you to put a bottle cage basically anywhere. Those are on our electric bike accessories list if you're interested. All right, let's move on to the cockpit here. First, let's talk about these grips. So a nice feature is it has locking grips. That's again, something that you will not see on many electric bikes in this price range. So I really like that they included locking grips. What it does, it just prevents your hand from turning the grips over time. So just a, a nice addition to have that probably doesn't add a lot of cost, but something that other companies kind of overlook. As far as the levers for the hydraulic disc brakes, I wasn't able to find any branding. My wife and I have been both riding this bike quite a bit the past couple weeks. And while these brakes might not be quite as good as Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, the fact that this bike does have hydraulic disc brakes is something we certainly still appreciated. Also on the left side of this electric bike is the left hand thumb throttle. So this is a thumb throttle that I now think I've seen about three times. It's a little bit different than the ones that you press down on like this. It's a little bit easier in my opinion to press. It has a little bit less resistance when you push it. So I find that your thumb gets a little less tired with this type of thumb throttle compared to the other ones on other electric bikes. And on the left side, we have the controls for powering on the display. I'm pretty sure this is not going to show up very well on camera, but it is a display that is quite large and it gives you all the information that you might need. Time, odometer, power, trip. And then of course you have your various pedal assist modes with the plus and minus button. Pedal assist one through five. You can also get your average speed, your max speed, and you do have a battery indicator in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, while I really like that this is a large display and it looks really nice, it's got some blue and white and red to the screen. One of the things that I've been finding is during the day, it's a little bit hard to read the screen. So I wish they allowed you to turn up the brightness even more. It's already maxed out. I went into the settings and verified that. So just something to keep in mind at night, of course, it's gonna look absolutely great, but this is something that I wish they would have been able to change on this bike is just make the display a little bit brighter. And this is not something that is unique to eSpin. I've been on a, other electric bikes where it's a little bit difficult to read the screen during the day. All right, let's move on to the right side. One thing I did forget to mention is with the brakes, they do have motor cutoff. So as soon as you hit those brakes, it's gonna cut off power to the motor. And you can see here we have an S ride shifter. So this isn't a company that I was previously familiar with and it is a trigger shifter. So you have the two triggers down here. 
And I did spend some time just yesterday adjusting the rear derailleur, which I'll show you in a little bit. So while this is not a name brand component, at least to my knowledge, I actually couldn't find a ton of information about this company, but I do think it is adequate, especially considering the price of this bike. And after adjusting it, I was able to get the shifting dialed in. As far as handlebars go, these are pretty much straight bars. Though one thing that I do like on this electric bike, a little bit of a surprise, you just don't often see it much, is they do have an adjustable stem. You can see we actually have the handlebars pivoted up quite a bit to get us in a more comfortable riding position. This is something that I recommend people if they don't find that they are very comfortable on their electric bike, you can easily put a adjustable stem on it, raise those handlebars up, especially if you have some swept back bars or you can put on swept back bars, that's gonna put you in a much more upright riding position. All right, let's talk about the battery. So this is a re-engine pack. I can pull it out here very easily and you simply slide it in from the bottom first and push in from the top and it locks into place, keys here, removable. And they opted to keep the battery pack black instead of painting it. And I actually think that's okay because with the battery, you're gonna be bringing it inside the house. It potentially could get scratched up anyway. And the black doesn't look bad with this frame anyhow. The battery also has some quick indicators, which to be honest, we haven't used a lot when we've used electric bikes with the same battery, but you can see here it says RGB. So if I hit the button here, it's gonna go blue because it has a high battery capacity currently. So the max capacity on this is 13.6 amp hours. And the charging port is right here. Charge on or off the bike. And you can see as far as branding goes, it says e-spin here on the side, as well as the e-logo up front. And it does say e-spin on the other side as well. Another thing I'll point out here is the class sticker. So you can see that it says sport class 500 and then 20, of course, that relates. That is a class two electric bike, 500 watts limited to 20 miles per hour. And on the website, they say that this motor peaks at 800 watts. And I'll also just point out underneath the frame here, you can see those cables coming down. In the rear, we have eight gears here, and I already talked a little bit about that S-Ride rear derailleur. And what is interesting is it does say RDN310, which I believe is the same model number that Shimano uses for one of their derailleurs. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. And you can see the cables coming here along the chainstay. They do have a little bit of a clear chainstay protector, though it is a little bit short, so if you wanna protect this nice looking frame, I'd highly recommend some 3M tape. That's what I have on my electric bike accessories list. You can get a neoprene sleeve or something like that, or perhaps wrap an old tube around it if you'd prefer a DIY project. And up front, you just have a single wall chain ring. I do prefer when they put a double wall chain ring, just gives a little bit more protection, though there's only so much you can expect on some of these very affordable electric bikes. Then of course, also in the rear, you have the motor. So a 500 watt motor that peaks at 800 watts. You'll get a sense of just how powerful this is in my riding footage in a little bit. And the E-Spin Sport comes with this rear rack, which is really nice, comes pre-installed. It's just usually an accessory that you have to purchase after the fact. And one of the nice things is because it comes already installed, that wire is already run for that rear light and the light is actuated by the brake. And as I usually say with the integrated lights is they provide a lot more visibility in night and during the day, it's just kind of a bonus to have. Of course, you can always buy other lights that are much brighter that you can recharge if you're looking for additional visibility. Also in the rear, you have that rear fender plenty of coverage. So this bike is definitely set up if you're gonna be doing some commuting, which is really handy, comes with accessories. You can put some bags on here and you'll be all set. And here's just a quick look again of the hydraulic disc brakes in the rear. And you also have, of course, the rear kickstand located out of the way of the pedals. So if you're gonna be moving the bike around, the pedals aren't going to come in contact with the rear kickstand. 
It comes with these metal pedals, unbranded, somewhat similar to the Welgo pedals, although I think perhaps the Welgo pedals would be a slight step up, of course. Pedals are something you can easily upgrade if you want more grip. Pretty standard saddle on this bike, unbranded. I see many people, if they're looking for additional comfort, the seat is something that they upgrade quite quickly. Of course, you can also purchase a suspension seat post. At least on my bike, this is a 30.8 diameter seat post. So that's what you can look for if you're looking for a suspension seat post. Of course, you should also verify with the bike that you receive. All right, that concludes the walk around. Let's get to some first person riding footage. I'll test this bike out, talk about the various pedal assist levels. And then of course I will take it up the large hill that I take all of our electric bikes up so you can get a sense of the hill climbing ability of the e-spin sport. All right, let's get to some of the riding footage, testing out the throttle as well as the various pedal assist levels. I have my speedometer on my phone. This is the app by Cool Nix. Likely not going to be able to see the e-spin display in the video, so I will also call out the speed from my screen. All right, here we go. Let's go throttle only. Just a note that you do need to have the bike in at least pedal assist one in order for the throttle to engage. All right, here we go. Eight, 11, 14, 17, 19, And the display is showing 20, there's 20 on the GPS speedometer. Again, 500 watt motor that they state peaks at 800 watts. All right, now let's talk about the pedal assist levels. So I'm actually in pedal assist one and I am in the highest gear. This is very common for us on our electric bikes as we ride in the Highest gear, of course, because you have the pedal assist only shifting down if we really need to when going up hills. And what I found with the e-spin bike is that pedal assist one kicks in nice and easy, doesn't jerk you at all. And you'll get up to about 10, 11, miles per hour, you can see there on the screen and I'm pedaling nice and easily. All right, let's go to pedal assist two. Just slightly faster, 11, 12, maybe 13 miles per hour. Now pedal assist three is where I feel like this motor really starts kicking in. Hopefully you'll be able to tell here. 11 miles per hour already, 13, 14. So 14 or 15 miles per hour and then pedal assist four, at least in the highest gear. And again, I am not working very hard at all, just a leisurely cadence. 17 miles per hour and of course pedal assist five which i just went into is going to get you up to that 20 mile per hour mark right there and one of the questions that i actually get asked quite frequently is can you pedal whatever electric bike i'm reviewing with no pedal assist and typically the answer is yes, although you're not going to be going very fast. And of course, hills are going to be the biggest challenge. So I have pedal assist turned completely off and I still have it in a pretty high gear, working a little bit, going about eight, nine miles per hour. So they definitely can be ridden, but you would only really want to do so in perhaps an emergency if your battery dies. So just something to keep in mind as it relates to electric bikes. All right, with that, let's take this bike up the large hill that I take up all of our electric bikes that we review, and we'll see how this 500 watt motor does. All right, here is the large hill. And the first time up, I will go throttle only. And I will try to see if I can read the watts on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. 
Right now it says I'm using about 300 watts, going about 18 miles per hour, 400 watts. And I think I did see on the display that it was sometimes peaking around 900 watts. All right, so now the hill is starting a little bit more, going 16. Using seven, 800 watts there, 830, 840, 860. So the motor is definitely peaking over 800 watts Still holding me steady at 14 miles per hour, which is pretty good. Thirteen. And I did not have a completely full battery. I've been out riding a little bit. So I think I was down one or two bars. Still using about 800 watts. And this hill is going to start leveling off very shortly here. So yeah, 13 miles per hour. In my opinion, that is really impressive for the price of this electric bike to be able to handle a pretty significant hill on throttle alone. In most cases, people are going to be helping the bike, which certainly goes a long way. All right, now I'm gonna head back down and I will take the bike up the hill while pedaling. Okay, here we go, hill test with pedaling. Apologies for all the background noise. We are by a craft factory, makes macaroni and cheese, so sometimes it smells really nice riding through here. All right, pedal assist one, I did shift down a little bit. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to go up to pedal assist two pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and go with pedal assist too. Definitely feel a little bit more. Starting to spin those pedals. So what is nice, even in a lower gear here, pedal assist too, not working too terribly hard. Not going to get up this hill very fast, going about seven or eight, but definitely going to make it without breaking the sweat. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three here. Can actually shift up. Nine miles an hour, 10. All right, pedal assist, four. And now you can really hear that motor kicking in. And I gotta shift up again. Okay, I'm in, now I'm in the highest gear. Working a little bit, going 13. Let's go ahead and go pedal assist five here. And the motor was saying I'm going about, or using about 500, 600 watts or so. And that's it, made it up the hill, no problem. So concluding thoughts on the hill climb, really impressed again for the price of this bike for being so capable using that motor on the hills. Not going to be a problem, perhaps unless you live somewhere in the mountains or something. All right, with that, let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my final thoughts on the e-spin sport. 
The eSpin Sport fits into this really interesting price point. At its current price of $1,329, it's above what I consider the very affordable $1,000 electric bikes. But it sits below the $1,500 price point while still offering some of the things that those higher priced electric bikes offer. What I like about the eSpin is that it comes fully outfitted with fenders, integrated lights, and that rear rack. Other companies will charge you extra and then once you receive them, they still have to be installed. Look around and I don't think you'll find many other full-size electric bikes with a decent sized battery good for between 30 and 50 miles as well as a front suspension. And let's not forget the hydraulic disc brakes which I personally haven't seen on any electric bike under $1,500. Now when I first learned of eSpin last year I thought the bike was too good to be true so it was awesome to finally hop on one. When you look at the components on the bike, it's pretty clear that these are not name brand components, except of course, those WTB tires that came on mine, those were a nice surprise. But you won't find the entry level Shimano or Tektro components, which are found on so many electric bikes around this price range. And that's probably the reason they're able to offer such an attractive price on this electric bike. But even without the name brand components, this bike still performed well. I actually preferred these S-Ride trigger shifters over the Shimano thumb shifters and once I got the S-Ride derailleur dialed in, it has functioned perfect sense. And sure the hydraulic brakes don't compete with the more premium brands when it comes to feel but they certainly felt better than mechanical disc brakes. They even were good to go out of the box and should need less adjusting over time. That should be music to the ears of the less mechanically inclined. And it's worth reiterating the motor performance. This bike surprised me up that large hill which should help calm any concerns from potential purchasers who would otherwise be swayed away from a 500 watt motor. Though as we saw it peaks much higher than that. I appreciated the softer touch of the left hand thumb throttle especially as my thumb while out of a splint is still in its final stages of healing. Now I can't comment on the customer support as a true customer since Eastman sent me this bike for review, but I did reach out to Eastman support once the bike arrived. The mount for the display was cracked in shipping and the fork was bent making it difficult to attach the front wheel. They responded in a timely manner and both new parts should be on their way soon and Eastman also offered to reimburse me for the install of a new front fork. So you can take that information for what it's worth and as I always recommend, do additional research as well. Besides the Sport, Eastman also sells the Nesta, a smaller frame folding bike currently priced at $1,400, the Aero, a city style bike priced at $1,199, the Flow, which is a full size frame only a step through with swept back handlebars at $1,569, and almost no e-bike brand would be complete without a fat tire model, the Nero comes in at $1,499. They seem to run sales often and when they aren't on sale, the link in the description is good for $50 off. For size reference, the Sport is recommended for riders 5'6 to 6'4. I am 6 feet tall with a 32 inch inseam and my wife is 5'5 and was still able to hop on the Sport without issue. The seat wasn't even in its lowest position and she could stand over the top tube as well. This is in part due to the frame design. I weighed the Eastman Sport at 56.6 pounds, which seems about right when you look at other e-bikes in the same class. And before we go, it's worth reiterating that the cobalt blue on this bike looks fantastic. I hope you found this review helpful. Again, links will be in the description if you want to help me continue to review electric bikes for a living. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.